Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got not one, but two fun cards to share. I've been wanting to make this interactive launching helicopter card for months now, and I'm really excited about the way it turned out and I'm happy to share it with you. And then I've got another bonus card as well. Today's video is part of Courtney Kreber's Hooray for 10K Hop. If you are hopping along with us, you're gonna find lots of great designers and some really cool prizes too. So I've got all the links down below to the next stop in the the hop as well as prize information. Um, but let's go ahead and get started on this card for now. So what I've done is um, grabbed my launch party dynamic set. That's a die set from MFT. And this is the mechanism that's going to make my helicopter raise up and down. Whenever I have a new die set like this, I like to go ahead and cut out all of my pieces out of scrap paper and just test it out. So what you're seeing here is my test piece. And I went ahead and cut it from different colors just so you can see the, the different parts there. Um, but those three little holes on the back there that I'm showing, um, those, I, I just kind of punched one and then I uh, punched another and another. And I was just testing placement for those. Um, there is an, an eighth inch punch in the die set, but I found it easier to use my, my hand punch there. That makes that part simple. And then you are going to want those little sliders for the back. And the way that they work is you just glue them to the pull tab, that green tab, and then you would glue one of the round washers on top, or sorry, the round backers on top. Those are tabs from My Favorite Things. They come in like a tic-tac shape as well as a circle. Either one works, you just need a pair of them. And I want to show you one other fun thing about this die. So that that purple arm that I have cut out, it, there's a groove, that, like a slot that's cut in the center of that. If you save that slot and you just kind of tuck it in between the, the two tabs and or the tab and the arm there, you can actually add a second moving piece to your card. You would just uh, glue that on top there. But I, I thought that was a, a fun feature. I'm not actually going to use it for today's card, but I wanted to show you. So off screen, I have gone ahead and I've cut out all of my pieces for my card. I ink blended a background um, and then a little piece that'll cover it up. I cut out all of my pull tab um, and other little pieces from the dynamic set here out of black cardstock. I've already stamped pull here um, with a heavy doodle set on the tab there. The only piece that I did not cut from black cardstock is that arm, that purple piece. Um, I went ahead and cut that out from clear acetate because I don't want it to be visible as much as possible. I want it to be hidden. But all of the other little pieces in the dynamic set there, um, I, I've gone ahead and cut out from the black, black cardstock. And we're going to need two of those little tabs and a pair of small brads to assemble the card here. So the first thing we want to do is to go ahead and figure out where the slot is going to be on this card. Now with my original piece, I kind of figured out where the arms and everything moves. Um, but for the card, I want my images just so that I can figure out placement here. So I know I want the helicopter to move up and down. I know I'm going to have the two little people kind of off to the left and with those pieces in mind, I can grab the slot punch, and that's the, the big slot in the die set. Um, and that'll help me um, just kind of line everything up, especially using the sample that I made ahead of time. It just kind of gives me an idea of where everything's going to move. So in this case, I moved it up a little bit from where I had cut the first time and in um, to, the, to the right a little bit as well. So I die cut that out of my background and then now we can start uh, assembling the arms. And this actually is very easy. The, the die set makes the whole thing super simple and MFT has few, uh, a few videos on this as well. So I have gone ahead and stacked up that clear arm and the pull tab and there are holes that are already cut into it. And then I just lined up the holes and attached them with a brad. I wanted to make sure that it's not a really tight fit. If it's too tight, then your arms won't swing freely and you do want them to be able to move easily. Now I can figure out where I want to put the, the hole right above the arm. And that's going to be in, um, in the background as well. So I'm just sort of playing with it here and then I'll grab a pencil and I'm just going to mark where I want that hole to be cut. 
Now I'm going to use my eighth inch hole punch. Again, there is um, a die in the dynamic set if you don't have a hole punch like this, um, but it just, it's faster with the, the handheld punch. And then I'm going to grab the washer, that the black circle that has the hole in the center, and I'm going to stick a, a brad through it, and then I'm going to connect that acetate arm to the back of the card there. And it, I'm also opening this brad very loosely. Um, you want everything to be able to slide freely. So I'm, I'm being gentle about the way I open it up and making sure everything moves. And we're good there. So now we need to figure out um, the placement for the, the little tabs on the back. So I've got those two black circles and those two tic-tac shapes. Um, again, they also have circles. Either one will work. Um, you're going to take the first one and you're going to place it near the brad on the back there. And you're just going to glue this down. You can use double stick tape if you want. I like the Nouveau glue for this um, just because I had it handy. And that, that'll stick to those um, the little plastic tabs just fine. And then you just glue the, um, the black circle on the back and that'll keep it in the track. And then I'm going to figure out where I want the end, the stop to be for the second piece. So this is going to limit the range of motion. So I'll figure out how high I want the helicopter to go in the sky. And once I've figured out exactly where I want it to stop, then I can line up that pull tab again and flip it over. And I'll glue the second tab in place right at the end of the slot on the, the left side now when you're looking at it from the back. And then we can just go ahead and put the, the little black circle on top of that as well, and that'll lock it in place. And then I'll let those dry for just a minute. Once they're dry, you can see how we've got that arm swinging as we pull. And we're going to want to add the collar to the front of this. And this little collar, it's, it's just basically a long strip that has score lines already. It's got two score lines, so it will fold up into thirds. And um, you're just going to put a little bit of glue on one flap, and then you overlap the other one on top of it. And that will give you sort of a flat donut. And that's our collar. And before I add glue to the back of this, I want to make sure that it fits loosely around our pull tab, and it does. So now I can add just a little bit of glue to the back side. I will slip that onto the pull tab, and then I can um, just line everything up, and I'll push it down, and that will help that, that pull tab glide smoothly. So you can see we're, we're moving along just fine. So now we have the mechanism made and it's time to cover it up. So all of the hard stuff is done. Now we're just covering it up. We're gonna use foam tape and we're gonna be careful not to put foam tape where the arm moves, just on the upper left side and along the bottom. So I've gone ahead and put my foam strips all around there and then I can go ahead and glue or adhere the, the little tarmac piece on top. I actually used a double layer of foam tape, but I realized I could have gotten away with a single layer. So just, just so you know, you can, <laughs> you can do a single layer if you want. And then now we're going to adhere our little characters. I put foam tape on the back of their heads and then, um, I can glue them down to the tarmac. So the, the flat part where their body is touching the, the popped up layer, um, will just be glued flat and then the foam tape will pop the back of their heads up a little bit, keep them um, from getting smashed. Um, and I do want to make sure that when I adhere the character that's closest to the arm down, that I'm not going to interfere with the movement at all. So you see me testing it from time to time here. That's just to make sure I'm not going to accidentally glue the arm down to the card, the back of the card there. Um, and everything's working fine. So then I can trim up the extra piece of the arm. That arm's much longer than what I need. Um, and I just want to, I just want to trim away enough so that I can still attach the helicopter, but all of the extra will go away. You don't need it. And this time, instead of using wet glue, I'm going to use a little piece of score tape to attach 
the helicopter to the acetate. With acetate especially, I like using score tape or double stick tape. It, it's faster and it, it seems to work better with um, with adhesion than, than regular glue. So that's, that's what I prefer to use there. And then to uh, finish up the card, we need to get our sentiment in place. This set is also from that Born to be Brave set from Kindred Stamps. And it says, thank you for your service. I stamped it a couple times there. Um, there's no foam tape on that layer, so it's not a problem. And then I can just go ahead and glue this to my card base. And I wanna make sure that I am not gluing, um, or I'm not putting any glue too close to the track there. I wanna let everything slide around perfectly easily from the back there. But because it's, it's fairly flat, um, I don't need to give it any foam tape back there. So while that's drying, I want to work on our bonus card real quick here. Now I've got one more character that I'd already color, uh, colored and cut her out. I've been coloring along for the 30-day um, coloring challenges, and, and I've had these guys ready to go. So I grabbed um, a couple pieces of pattern paper and the My Hero die from Heffy Doodle, and then that You Got This I already embossed on a little strip. That's also in the Born to be Brave set. And then I've got this cute little girl and I'm just going to kind of glue it all together. Now, when I'm working with a straight strip that, that you got this strip there, I want to make sure that this ends up nice and parallel. So I'm going to use my grid mat to help me out. And the first thing I'm going to do is just glue that strip to her foot so that it's kind of underlap or overlapping there. And then this is where the grid mats and it's just handy for me. Um, so I put glue all along the character and that strip, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it with the grid lines there and kind of centering her and the sentiment and making sure it's parallel. And then I'll glue my, my, the My Hero sentiment down. Now that I did triple up. So it's like a layer of glitter paper on top and then two or three more layers of black paper um, cut out underneath and just glued together. And I do find that tweezers are handy for stuff like this. So I use them all the time. And my PVA glue in that fine line bottle is really handy as well. So I'll go ahead and glue that down. And you saw how fast this comes together. I think the, uh, the hardest part was coloring. <laughs> and I've been having fun with that. Now to pop this up, instead of using a bunch of foam tape, I just used a piece of fun foam. Um, I get packs of this at the dollar store. It's thin and it's um, it's handy. So for bigger pieces, I use fun foam. And then I'm just using that same PVA glue to glue it all down. And once I get it lined up, I want to add a couple finishing touches. I'm going to add just a little bit of um, flatback gems to that card, but I didn't want to add any glitter or flatback gems to my helicopter card. I wanted to keep that a little more masculine. And you can see how they came together here, how that helicopter launches. I love the way it turned out. And our little girl here, she's super cute. Now, don't forget today's video is part of Courtney Kreber's 10K Celebration Hop. I have got links to the next stop in the hop down below. We've got a bunch of prizes you can win the Born to be Brave stamp set that I used here. And on each stop in the hop, there is a different featured stamp set. Those are all prizes in the hop. So make sure that you enter to win, leave comments below. If you're new to my channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell. I make lots of interactive cards. And then when you're done hopping, come on back for a few more videos. As always, my friend, thanks for watching.